G'day. Uh, this video is about a little experiment I did um, about bottling. I see a lot of people uh, put their sugar in the bottle, of whichever sort of sugar they choose. Uh, they fill it up, put the cap on, and they shake it to mix in the sugar. Yeah, it's not a really good idea, and I just wanted to try and do an experiment uh, to show you. Um, as I've said before, it's great to have pet bottles to squeeze the air out, put the lid on. When you're using glass bottles, you can't do that. Uh, but it's still not a good idea to shake. Um, they can, you know, people can say as many times as they like that the yeast is going to scrub the oxygen, <clears throat> and it's just that's not true. <laughs> um, what can happen, especially if you shake it, the oxygen does the damage to the beer before the yeast kicks off and has any chance of trying to scrub the oxygen um, from the wort or the beer that's in the bottle. Uh, so it's just a quick experiment. It's only one. Never trust anything with just one experiment. But this has ended up a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so it's worth taking a look at. And don't just think uh, it's only for an IPAs because it is, and this beer ended up not really being an IPA at all anyway. Um, it went crystal clear. Um, it was just, I think the wheat wasn't crushed properly anyway. I've been through all that before in other videos um, about the first fail. I call it the fail gel juice. It was still a great drinking beer. Don't get me wrong, I've been really enjoying it. Jedi juice fail beer. Have a look how clear that is. But it's just something to think about because it's, it's a, there's a lot of bad practices and just because of people do it a lot. Too, I used to do it. I used to do it, uh, God, when, I, when, I, when was that? When I was a kid, like, you know, 31 years ago when I started brewing, I used to do it. All the way up to when I was in Brunswick in the 90s. Uh, I moved there in 94, uh, you know, 95, 98 when I was brewing there. I used to shake the bottles with the sugar in it. Uh, these days I know better. Uh, it's just not a good thing to do. Even though you're going to be left with oxygen at the neck there, uh, and possibly the yeast might consume some, you don't, you, you just don't want it mixed into the into the beer uh, by shaking it. Anyway, let's have a quick look at this video. Uh, it's, it was recorded in a few different parts. First part, so I might repeat myself a few times as usual. The first part I recorded of how I actually bottled it uh, was like the 16th of. Um, last month, uh, four weeks ago, it was fermented, uh, it was carved for about three weeks and been in the fridge for a week. Uh, so we'll look at the bottling, then we'll look at the tasting, and uh, cheers. Thanks for watching. So first I'd, I'd just like to try and get the air even out of the little bottler. First one, I'll fill as carefully as I can. And I'm going to squeeze the air out as carefully as I can and try and get that on. Come on, let's get on there. I'm squeezing the air out as I put it on. Uh, Alright, that's all I'm doing for this one. So that just gets put away like that. Hopefully, we get another full second bottle. Oh, and we just got another bottle out. I'll put the lid on this one. That one went on easier typically than the one I was trying to be careful with. I didn't squeeze that oxygen out and I'm going to shake that like some people do. I do not recommend shaking, but some people do. All right, I'll mark these. That's the shaken one. And of course, that's the unshaken one. This is going to be, it might be a bit noisy, I'm in the garage with the garage door open, but it's a nice day. Here is the bottle of the original Jedi Juice. This one was the shaken one. I put a um, couple of carb drops in, 
bottled it as usual. I didn't squeeze the air out and I shook it. This one here, I just bottled, I squeezed the air out and I capped. Now, it's only been four weeks since they were bottled. So, you know, I think this test would uh, show a different thing if I hadn't left it for a couple of months. Um, they feel carved. They've been in the fridge for a couple of days. Let's just have a look, eh? So this, and anyway, we'll open up the one I squeeze the air out first. I've got a pretty high shelf here, so you can see what I'm doing. This was the one I shook for the oxygen out. They look quite dark on the camera there. As usual, they're not quite as dark. Oh my, I can see already. I don't know if it's showing on camera. This one here, yeah, you can see it. You can see that, can you? Look at the colour difference. Exact same batch, same time, bottled the same day, same keg. I'll take a photo from this side so I can show you, just in case with a light behind it. Oh, it's a bit bright. Hang on. So there's a definite, definite, definite colour change, as you'd expect from the oxidation. I know I see a lot of people say, shake your bottles when you put your sugar in, mix it up. Just don't. Like, I'm not, I haven't tasted them, but you can tell the difference there. Wow, this experiment has gone a lot better, quicker than I thought. Now this beer on tap cleared right up. I've got a picture I was drinking some last night in the keg. Uh, it's just about empty, I just moved the keg to put the nut brown in. Um, I've probably stirred it up, but I, I've got to go. I've got things to do. I can't have three big uh, beers right now at this time of day. So I'm just judging between these two. That, although it still smells okay, it has that bottled smell. Now, I don't know if this one has too. Uh, well, it hasn't. It hasn't got that classic. It's sort of caramelly, it's like a, I don't know, people say wet cardboard, I would, I would say, it's like a, I don't know, like a, a raisin, like a raisin. So anyway, this one wins for aroma, I don't know which one to sip first, I'll sip this one first. Tastes okay. Nowhere near as good as what's in the keg I was drinking last night. Look, it's drinkable. You can still taste the hops there at the moment. I'm actually glad I didn't leave it much longer. I think it would have turned even more. We'll try this one here. Much better. Well, this, I, I, I had a feeling this experiment would work. I didn't know if it would work in this time frame. They were carving for about three weeks. They've been cold for about a week. I don't, I, I don't really have to say anything. You can tell by looking at them that this is heavily oxidised. And this one isn't. Now, this was just carved with a bottling wand. I can show the footage if I haven't already and uh, I know which one I'd rather be drinking this one by a mile well they look like two different beers the shaken bottle without squeezing the air out 
oops, and that, that's just the one where I bottled and I squeezed the air out. Look at that. I think just the, the look of them uh, speaks a thousand words. Well, that experiment worked. I feel like I'm just ahead. That experiment worked. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my patrons. Thanks for my subscribers. If you like this video, um, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, press the bell, and uh, thanks very much. Cheers. Don't shake your bottles. And where you can, squeeze the air out. I know you can't squeeze the air out with glass bottles. Still, you're better off not shaking them. There's the kegged one. I decided to go and get a bit. It is shaken up. That was crystal clear last night. I can show you the pictures. Um, but as you can see, it's the same colour as that, except it's cloudy. This is a little bit lighter. And there's the shaken up one. Look at that. This one is full of yeast because I've got, as I said, I had to move the keg to get the brown ale, the nut brown into the kegerator. So it shook up the yeast. It was crystal clear last night. You probably saw the photo. So there, look, you, you know, there's not much difference there at all. But the shaken, oxygen, bad. Bad, 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 bad. Cheers. I'm pretty happy with that test. That's one of the best tests ever. Cheers.